Hello there, fellas. It's me again, the Pathetic Loser nobody wants to watch, and for obvious reasons. And um, I decided to do something nobody has ever done before, ever in the history of ever, and that is do a tier list on something that probably isn't interesting, uh, excluding, excluding the small minority of people that are still high, um, incredibly big fans of Inazuma. Yeah, this kind of my own opinion as well, so don't take it too seriously. Is that, is that understood, please? Because I do not believe any of these go below the rank of D. Maybe even C, because I'm doing this on a whim. I want to uh, follow my own feelings on this. And this is excluding the games or the manga, because A, if I included the game, this would get really complicated, or if I did only the games, that would get complicated. And B, I have never read the manga for Inazuma 11. It is not available in any stores in my country, and I can't find more than five chapters uh, scanned and translated online. So that's kind of how that goes. And the thing is, most of these are not terrifically bad. They are a-okay, most of them. And I think this, the, these are all the, you know, animated pictures of Inazuma, all the series and the few movies and... I do consider the Chojigen match to be the Dream Chojigen. I don't even know how to call it exactly, but I do consider it to be more of a special rather than a football movie. I mean, I, I think most people will agree with me on that, but never mind that. I think we're about ready to begin, and to start it off, we're gonna go to back to 2008 with the original Inazuma 11, all three seasons, 127 episodes, and... If we're counting this just between the Inazuma 11 series, this would be a straight up S or S plus or SS whatever. Um, however, I'm counting this both as the from the Inazuma 11 selection that I've got here, all of them from the original to uh, Orion, which we'll talk, we'll mention that in a little bit. But um, if I'm judging it as an anime on its own, it goes to A or A plus at at best because it does have a few parts that really drag on, such as I was consulted with uh, a fellow mate that I talked to from, from time to time. Fucking every day, I know the guy, I annoy the guy a lot. Um, it really drags on in the third season in the national tournament. And that's kind of, I, I'm kind of iffy on that opinion that I half agree with it and half don't because I really don't didn't find a problem with it. So in my opinion, it doesn't really drag on at all. But um, see, the, the original series is just beautiful. It's not beautiful visually. Yeah, it is pretty, but that's not what I mean. For now, I'm going to give it an S and I'm going to continue my explanation. It's kind of like uh, it's when Inazuma was at, it be as it's at its best. It's uh, the definition of the sequels get worse and worse gradually. Uh, and I think this series kind of defines it because the first season was just kind of like the introduction, the opening. Season 2 was where it really started get to get going with the... Um, Call alien plotline, which if you know the series, which you probably shouldn't if you're watching this, they weren't real aliens, etc. etc. And there was such character development. Uh, Endo got his first uh, shonen depression moment, which, if if I may say so, if I may say so, was e executed brilliantly. Uh, also, the final matches absolutely gorgeous in terms of story, and the third season was just packed jam <laughs> jam packed with interesting moves for the most part and while some of the characters did get the boot in terms of relevancy or <laughs> got like two minutes of relevancy in the whole series uh the whole season in general the original series is where it's at because i will never forget that that match with uh in as much a little gigante it's kind of like a clash of two personalities that you really love because for them for a lot of the matches in the series you kind of are you know you're hoping Endo would win and you hate the opposing team for the most part because they're kind of dicks for the most part that's how, how I saw it but Rokoko was genuinely lovable and I really love the guy but so yeah that's why I'm gonna give it an S within its own series that's how we're gonna judge these okay so I made the embarrassing realization that um I had forgotten to get an image for the original 127 episodes even though they're my favorite part of the entire fucking franchise and I had put the ogre movie on S rank which uh, let me just fix that real quick and put the actual series on there 
because I was thinking that I have forgotten the ogre movie image, but it was actually, yeah, whatever. Okay, so again, let's move on to the next one. I said all I wanted to say about OG Inazuma. Oh, shit. Oh, crap. Okay, we're here with the ogre movie. And to be fair, this will get a rather C. This will get a C spot. Because for the most part it was a recap, at least how I saw it, because it was a very quick, very um, fast paced recap of all of season 1 of Inazuma. Uh, I consider it to be like Dragon Ball Z in a completely different timeline, with some, where something else happened. Uh, the whole... everything occurred when it came to Zeus, and there were little snippets of canon and uh, future organization people, I don't remember, the ogres, yeah, <laughs> the movie's called The Ogre Movie, and I don't fucking know the name of the ogres, okay, sure, and it's, it kind of felt as if it could possibly be happening in the actual season one timeline, because these are things that are happening when, when you wouldn't, you would probably be expecting to see them, I don't know what I'm trying to explain, but yeah, it, the only thing keeping it interesting was the final match, because it's actually the well, the thing with Zeus and the ogres, that interaction, that interaction and the match between Raymond and the ogres was kind of the only thing that kept it interesting. Besides that, it was kind of a, a kind of boring, kind of drag on. It felt a little unnecessary, should I say? But I'll be honest. Omega the Hand, uh, not, yeah, Maximum Fire, uh, the Legend, th that shit was amazing. And Cannon doing his own move, uh, that was beautiful. That brought a big fat smile on my, to my face, and I was just like, oh, that's beautiful. So yeah, that gets a C. If it wasn't for that final match, it would probably be a D at, at worst. But C is the best I can give it, at least right now, with my point of view right now. The next one we're going to look at is Go. Okay, so here we are, here we are. I'm giving Go a B. Yeah, because... Uh, sorry, about that. sorry about that, but Go is generally the best out of the Go trilogy of series. I mean, Go, Chrono Stones, and Galaxy. I do consider Go to be the best one because it's the most Inazuma-like. Uh, and by that, I mean, yeah, Inazuma, the first season, this one, did, did uh, cover the topic of aliens, but it was kind of more down-to-earth. In Galaxy, they got they got a fucking space, and I'm sorry, but I, I kind of like my soccer grounded. And in Go, well, it was kind of garbage in terms of, again, the same things that I've mentioned before. It was a little too grounded to... No, what am I talking about? It's not too grounded. What I'm trying to say is, it was underwhelming, okay? There, I do like the darker plotline and the most, in the more serious tone of the series. Uh, Cashins were kind of meh. Well, in the game they were incredibly fucking overpowered, and they made me want to kill myself when I was playing against uh, someone, someone with another 3DS who doesn't even live near me anymore and can't even can't even play with them anymore. But the thing, my point is, Go was the best out of the Go series, and that gets a B for me because uh, Tsurugi it was awesome. Ten Tenma was kind of aight. Uh, Shindok was kind of a crybaby and needed to stop for a little, and Aitor, I'm sorry, I, sorry Weebs, I don't remember his Japanese name at the moment. He was one of my favorite characters just because of that crooked attitude. He was a fucking cool guy. Okay, I'm sorry, that's just, that is how I see it. Don't, don't, don't mean me for that one. Uh, but, I, I'll be honest, Tenma was a little too Endo-like. I would have liked a little bit more diversity between protagonists, but... I did enjoy my time with him, I didn't despise it, but it did get annoying when he was like, Soccer can cry, bitches, don't make soccer sad, you motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, that was high quality as shit. But uh, the final match with in the series, in, in that, yeah, in, in Go, was fucking garbage. <laughs> I mean... I'm not gonna get into too much detail, but you can't summon Kishins. You're fighting against a team that has Kimmon that is summon Kishins uh, unlimitedly or avatars, whatever, and you fucking beat them without using Kishins. And I'm like, 
what the fuck, dude? Yeah, so that's getting a hard B. I, I almost want to put it on C, but it had a v a many cool moments along with it, and that kind of was it over. Okay, so movie Griffon. Okay, you see this movie? Also B. Oh yeah, hear me out here. I don't know how how people feel about movie Griffon. Because I've heard people be disappointed about Go and loving the original series because Captain Tsubasa move over in the eleven defined soccer slash football slash anything that any other <laughs> synonymous word for soccer. But the thing is, I've never heard anyone say anything about Griffon. I've never heard anyone complain about it, anyone rant about it, and I was too lazy to read a review on it. And I'm just gonna give my opinion on it. It was rather stale and a little Again, disappointing, but it it had gorgeous animation, which is something I didn't really expect because all of them aren't very good at animating. Um, I guess I, I can't really judge because I'm not an animator. I don't animate shit. I don't. I barely even draw from time to time. The thing is, I just loved the effects, the lighting, the smooth animations uh, towards the end of the movie, and you know what? Mm, yeah, let's move it to C. More like C plus. Consider it uh, between C and B. A C plus because it was better than Ogre, but it was still. I know it's it's kind of like the same with the Korok on a Basket movie and the Dragon Ball Z movies. You can't expect it to add too much plot. The premise is too simple, and so it just throws you into the matches. And you get three matches that two of them are kind of fucking dumb. Uh, well, at least the. Um, Eternal Darkness one was, no, Eternal Night, Ancient Darkness, I think it was, yeah, I think that's the team, was a little disappointing, except for the, the goat scene, that was, that was, priceless, uh, and the Hakui White Hurricane during the first match was beautiful, and the final match between Zero, against Zero was absolutely amazing, I loved it to death, but yeah, C+, plus indeed, because it was kind of, meh, it was kind of, Excluding those parts, the training war was the training montage was kind of it. I didn't fuck with it too much. I didn't hate it too much. It was just alright, kind of in the middle of it. It was enjoyable. Okay. Now let's open a really fucking weird can of worms here. Chrono Stone. I might get a little bit of flack for this. I mean, I, I'm forcibly gonna. I'm I'm gonna make. Ryukario watch this, I'm gonna force it down his own throat because I want him to see how I feel about especially chrono stones because it's kinda hard to put into words but imagine this a again a D plus no a C minus I know the same isn't that the same thing? Whatever. Imagine this a C minus. So it's kinda like yeah, let's just put it on D. Uh, nah, no, 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 wait, yeah, it's going on C specifically, because, okay, I'm sorry, but the later in the Zeno series are very fucking average, you cannot tell me they're not, most of them are very on the eh side, the thing is with Chrono Stones, it completely fucking turned everything on its head from funny, interesting, and so and sometimes whop whoppingly weird soccer fights and plot lines, and it turned it into fucking Harry. He fucking uh, uh, Harry Potter the fuck out of the series and made it a time travel with Saint Seiya armors against fucking bio bionic uh, not bionicle children. Um, uh, I don't even remember what they're called, but it was so dumb. It was just uh, annoying to bear with. It was kind of a slug. Slug. It was a sluggish experience for me. I will admit, every time there was a new uh, mixing act, that was that was. Obviously the highlights, while and while the Keshin Arms concept was completely ridiculous, and th they're just trying to. It was kind of like it feels powerful. It looks powerful. They, they look like they're seeping with energy and power. And then the next the next match, someone more powerful comes here. Uh, one of our team members gets his own Keshin Arm. They beat him, and that repeats for the entire series until the final match where they again pull something out of their ass because. I do believe the original Inazuma was the only series they didn't pull something out of their ass in. Chronostones was one of the worst. Definitely one of the worst. 
So I'd say it gets a C minus. So, at least in my opinion. I will admit some of the fan service during the time travel uh, storyline was I couldn't have wished for anything better. I mean, seeing Endo as a child and watching him grow a kitchen, well, yeah, it is ridiculous and imagine a different timeline, he'll be destroying bitches with that thing, he would be the best goalkeeper ever, but the thing is it wasn't enough. I mean, Zhu Liang, who's that? I mean, uh, let me just add something here. For all of the Go Game, for all, all the Go Game, say Go Game, for all the Go anime series, I first played the games, including Galaxy, which is only Japanese, so I didn't know what the fuck was going on. But I still played the games first and watched the anime second. And as as adaptations, they are very hit and miss, in my opinion. But the thing is, they're adaptations and work. Fuck you, Windows. I, I hate you uh, very much for making me sidetrack myself. And yeah, Chrono Stones was. I'd say the anime was, I gotta be careful with my words, the anime was better in some aspects than the game, but the game was better than the anime in other aspects. That's all I can say. I mean, ga the gameplay in Chrono Stones was just straight up fun. Uh, the level 1992 skin, so, so. but it was fun. And watching the anime sometimes feels like the biggest drag of all time and really repetitive, but that can also be said for the entire franchise, but enough about that, it's a C-, minus. enough. Moving on, we've got Galaxy. That is getting an A. I'm sorry, Galaxy is one of my favorite things to come out of this entire franchise and out of OLM's animating career, and while it does share the same problems as Chronostones, it just said, fuck you, we're going to space on different planets, uh, two different planets, to play soccer so the universe doesn't get destroyed. Yeah, that concept is retarded. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it, that is retarded. Inazuma, uh, the first series did the same thing, but they kept it grounded to Earth and they weren't aliens. But this time, it's actual aliens that look like aliens that, that, that are humans, essentially. Which um, is weird. I mean, the whole concept of the tournament being um, kind of an alien tournament to uh, for the possession of Earth, that was kind of interesting. I mean, it was a great concept until we moved on to actual space and every match felt boring. Uh, the in inspirations and aspirations were just fucking all over the place. They weren't interesting for the most part. And yeah, Galaxy was kind of like, um, you're there for the entirely new cast. You're there for the badass that is Ibuki and Maratagi. Holy shit, those two guys make me moist I'm sorry you're there for the souls which is a really interesting concept and is really interestingly inter interpreted in the video game but the thing is they completely shunned Keshins that immediately makes it the one of the best Yazuma series ever because it sort of goes back to its roots for at least for at least one third of the series, we have no cash-ins, no bullshit, straight up soccer with superpowers. That is what I want. That is the best Inazuma 11 can be. When there, when it's natural slash superpowered soccer. That is what Inazuma 11 is to me. It's superpower fantasy soccer. I, I, I've broken my, uh, my foot and my leg trying to do fire tornado once by jumping off a swing. I kid you not. I never tried to pull out fucking um, pe Arch Pegasus. That would not, never work. But the thing is, as if I never work. The thing is, Galaxy is good. The ending was good, in my opinion. It was kind of alright. Seven, six or seven out of ten. It was a good series. Probably one of the best uh, franchises I've ever got. It's not gonna be the original though. And now we go on to, I guess this. This movie is getting um. A, a, a B, a B, because it would have gotten an A, a S was unachievable, nothing, none of these, these three, these uh, seven, none of these, these other six, they're never gonna get a S, S. nothing will compare to the original series for me, but the thing is, the, Danbai Senki, Danbai Senki, I don't even remember what it's, how to pronounce, but I can't pronounce half my words, but the thing is, this movie was stunning. The animation was 
top notch. It was exactly what what you'd expect from a high budgeted movie. It is can't even describe it. You should go watch it for yourself. This is the best Inazuma Eleven has ever looked, mind you. The plot was ridiculous. It was stupid. It was again. I never played Dumbo Senki. Never ever. And I don't even plan on doing it anytime soon. Maybe I can fucking get the video game for my 3DS and try it out. But I didn't really know, know half the cast. I didn't really understand half the cast. Didn't really sympathize with half of them. Like at the end of the movie, I uh, think like a bunch of characters from Double Sync just appear and try to help. And I'm, I'm thinking, who the fuck are you people? But what we got from the Inazuma cast was beautiful. Uh, we get. Um, Wow, they did cock tease me with the match between uh, New Inazuma Japan, I think they, they called their team, and uh, the Inazuma Legend Japan. That was a that was great until they cock teased cock teased us with cock teased us. I'm gonna say that five thousand more times until they cock teased us with Aster, Flora, and the whole that other match. That match was awesome. They do bring out some Chronostones elements. Wait, I think this came after Clone Stones and before Galaxy. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just saying it was a good movie. Again, it was a great movie. Absolutely better than Griffon. Absolutely better than The Ogre. Wow, it doesn't have... Uh, well, I do believe it's kind of weird in the power balancing department because uh, Inazuma Legend Japan gets trampled in one shot and uh, New Inazuma Japan just fucking survives 5,000 shots before even going mix and max. And, like, and I'm thinking... There's no way Tenma can survive more than Endo, that's not, not feasible, but... Okay, logistics, details, whatever. It was a great movie, beautiful movie, go watch it for yourself. And I did think it was stupid that a midfielder just go goes for a god hand W, but we're gonna ignore that. And now we get to the Joe Jiggin match. My boy, A+, plus, A+, plus straight up. That movie is... No, that's... I'm gonna call it a movie special. That is... Fan service, dude. That is the pinnacle of fan service right there. Fucking oh, it makes me so it makes me feel so good. I even fucking pushed my editing box, uh, filming box, whatever. It's great. Um, we see so many characters back in their form. We see so many characters interact with old characters. It it's amazingly good. Uh, the interactions between Go and Jitsuruki, that is something I've always wanted to see. I don't care if it makes sense, it is good. It is the fan service trash material that I, the casual, not the casual, the hardcore Inazuma fan, fucking adore to see. It's kind of like when they did with the 2008 uh, Yosun Goku and his friends return Dragon Ball special. That was fucking a great for me as a fan. And I love this movie, the special. I mean, fucking Shu and Terumi just go for the dawn, and I'm like, holy shit, what? Why? How? I don't care how, it's it's there. It's good. It's amazing. Go watch it, if you're an Inazuma fan. If you've seen everything from the 2008 original to the 2013 Galaxy uh, series, all the fucking movies, everything, just fucking go watch Choji again. Zanark is in there. Zanark-sama. The number 99 boy is in there, so you should definitely check it out. And, yeah, I just did that because, fuck Air Aries, Aries and Tendon, fuck that shit, fuck that anime, <laughs> fuck everything about it. It was so rushed, it was fucking garbage, the, the thing about the old series is, yeah, they repeat the animation because, the animation, because who would want to redraw the same animation every fucking week? Nobody, and they don't have the time or budget for that. The thing is, it was less obvious than with Aries, it made it look a lot less uh, genuine. The series felt uh, horrible with some of the characters. I mean, half of the Raymond team is absolutely not memorable. You would forget them as quickly as they did their first move and then fell into obscurity until the last five episodes of the series where they just pulled something out of their ass that we haven't been shown that they were training for. It was just a horrible series. I genuinely hate it. It's probably one of the worst parts of the franchise and it should burn and should never exist <laughs> okay okay but enough about that and the protagonists were fine fucking uh nosaka you okay yuma um uh, I, I i legit forgot the name <laughs> uh asta 
Hey, I'm just calling Asta because fucking hell. And Hayzaki was the best. Be honest with yourself. Hayzaki was the best. Y you can't dismiss that. Fucking the Penguin Born is always the best. Just like Kido was the best, Hayzaki is the best in the series. And they had so many fucking ripoff characters. I mean, Kozomaru, as much as I love that tubby chubby piece of manliness of the fire tornadoes in Bakun and Screws, he ripped off every move Axel or Goenji used. Every single one! And the fact that they just did a fucking separate timeline was just stupid. Can they just do it in a separate universe? No, not a separate timeline. Wait, what am I trying to explain here? Never mind. Timelines, universes, I don't care about that. I'm just watching for the fun. And for um, the last one, Orion. I'll be I'll be absolutely fair with Orion. I have not watched more than four episodes of Orion. I dropped it immediately because it was appalling, horrible. I didn't enjoy it, and I. Do not know if it gets better from there on out. What I saw from it is stupid. I've seen a clip of three goalkeepers standing behind the goal, which I don't care if it was Endo's genius strategy. I'm putting gigantic air quotes with genius, but it was retarded. And the whole okay, the the Ashura, the Asura Asura, that looked great. Some of the new moves, great. Is it still connected to Ares and has its problems? Yes. It does apparently, according to some people that I've seen talk about it, it is less worse than Ares because of something about Ares having to have more episodes and now Orion is that. It's just a long running series like the original uh, or the, uh, the Go series. Excuse me for that burp. I don't like Orion. The openings are complete trash and while yeah, they probably fit more towards the Ian Steven series. Um, sorry. Um, they fucking suck. As openings. The first series at least had um, a really good one, like a, a very opening that made you tap your fingers on your desk while you watched it while you were and it was hyping you for the episode. It was a good song, it was interesting, it was good, and Orion isn't that, none of that. So that is pretty much how I feel about that one. And uh, this is my tier list. This is obviously gonna be the longest video on my channel. Because it is unscripted, it will barely be edited, and in whatever the case, it's probably not going to be interested, interesting for anyone. I, d I do hope I got people interested in the series, at least a bit of the series. I don't know, but th 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 my point is that I wanted to throw an opinion out there about these peculiar series that are part of this franchise. And I think that's the point of the internet, giving an opinion and getting your opinion trampled by someone. And as every YouTuber has ever said, you can, if you, uh, if you even care about this, if I'm relevant enough, you can respond to me, tell me if you would have picked something different, if you would have arranged the, you know, the rating a little, if you would have done something like that, because I'm totally okay with that. You, you, you could probably tell me, no, Corona Stones was as Frank, which, bullshit, but you, know, you can tell me that. I'm not gonna believe you, but you can tell it. Tell me that. And um, yeah. Anyways, that's probably all, all I want to say. Thank you very much for giving me. I don't even know how long it's been. Like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Thank you for giving me your attention. You probably didn't watch the whole thing. Thank you for giving me your attention for as long as you watched. And goodbye. I had fun making this. You probably didn't have fun watching this.